it's a beautiful day to be outside filming this video. But what we wanted to do was work with you when you're using functional electrical stem or you're using any type of electrotherapy. And we're also looking at the nutritional requirements. One of the basic guidelines of nutritional requirements is you're not going to eat a bunch of weeds and it's going to make you healthy. A bunch of weeds can hurt you too. But the good thing about it, sometimes when you supplement your weeds and you put them into your body, and we call weed, beneficial weeds, herbs. But when you supplement and start putting those in and change the taste of your palate, then you eliminate some of the sugars and the starches and the other things that are not good for you. And what I want to do is just give you a beginning point to reference on how we try to change you nutritionally from what you have been using and we try to equip the body with the proper nutrition so that you really can heal, you can feel better and your body has the tools it needs in order to get healthy. And this is going to be a quick little short thing giving you some ideas on some herbs to add to your diet not only for all the phytonutrients that you get out of the herbs themselves, because you're literally eating the plant, the leaf itself, but you also then modify your diet so that you no longer find sugars and heavy fats and excessive salts, which you find in many prepackaged products. You don't like them anymore. Once you make that modification, your diet improves, you then take in the necessary nutrients that can help you assist yourself in getting better and improving your health. Let's take a look at some herbs. Here's a typical herb planter that you can use when you're cooking. This right here happens to be a curly crisp parsley. We use curly crisp parsley simply because we can take it, you've got all the nutrients. You can use this one in tabbouleh and other Mideastern dishes. The thing I like about it, my daughters always tell me I need it more than anybody else, is this is also a uh, breath herb. So I eat a little bit of parsley and my breath smells better. Doesn't help me, but it helps the people I'm talking to. Another thing here, you'll see rosemary. You'll also see chives. Now, one of the things, this is a regular chive. One of the neat things about this chive is besides cutting the chive in your potato to take away the butter that your excess butter you're putting in there, you actually use this, you start developing that taste. You can also take off a little piece of the chive blossom. Eat this one too. Taste of that. Oh my gosh, it's a mild garlic. This is just a regular chive, the real true garlic chive. A piece of that blossom, which is white, is so garlicky that it is more garlic flavor than what you get actually eating a garlic clove. But that's another point that you can look at. You supplement in the garlic flavor, and then you don't want some of these other things, such as aspartame and some of these other sugar additives or substitutes, which we know we don't need a lot of. All right, now we want to just look at this whole family of mints. Mints are absolutely wonderful. One of the things you do with your mints, basically all mints come from either spearmint or peppermint as the original species, and we break them off. We end up with orange mint, we end up with lime mint, we end up with pineapple mint, we even end up with chocolate mint. What those things are telling you by their name is places to use it. If something says sprizzle with lemon, you might want to look at using a lemon mint and putting that in last. But the nice thing about the mints, break your leaf off, put it in your salad. Break you a bunch of leaves off, put it in some hot water and make you a tea. The chocolate mint we have over here and the orange mints, these are things that you can add to fruit salads. Pineapple mint, fruit salads, they're telling you where to go. Chocolate mint, instead of putting a thick chocolate syrup on that's very sugary, Chop up some chocolate mint leaves and put that over your ice cream or your custard or whatever it is you're eating. That's just a healthy way to change. And once you've done that a few times, you don't want the chocolatey stuff. Then we tell people about the mints in general. When you're eating a salad, the reason we use heavy fat laden salad dressings is iceberg lettuce just doesn't taste that good by itself. Once you integrate the mints into your salad, now, you don't even need a salad dressing. One of the things you might start using at that point is extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of vinegar, maybe a touch of mustard, mix it together, but you don't overcome the flavors of what you're creating in your salad. Another way to use mints. Another diet change, we love it, everybody does. Best way to get into herbs, basil. Good old, what they call Italian Genovese type basil. What we do with basil, just to give you an example of how to get it started, Take your leaf oil, you've been growing it outside organically. Take your tomato that you've just cooked, you've just grown. Cut your tomato, put your basil on it. Put some mozzarella cheese over it. 
drizzle with extra virgin olive oil. Eat it. You will absolutely love it and the flavor of basil comes out. Here's cilantro. What do you do with cilantro? Cilantro, you chop it up, put it into a little salsa. Your tomatoes that you just screwed, mix them together and just put that on top of bread and eat it. Being gluten free for many people. That's another way to add into it. But that's cilantro, that's basil, that's something people love. Other thing we gotta remember, anytime you're trying to get people to modify their diet, it's gotta look pretty. You want something that's nice. You're actually looking right now what's called the borage flower. That is an edible flower. A lot of times people will take this little flower, break it off, and put it into their salad. They've put it in their salad with their different mints and it stands out and it's very pretty. Kids love to eat like this. That's a way to teach a child to eat something that's healthy for them. Put it in there, they eat it that way, they got that. Put it on a white icing cake. Put it in a punch. It's a beautiful thing. People love the conversation. It's a nice presentation. They want to eat it. It's a very nice plant, borage. Another thing I want to show, many gardeners love to raise their own tomatoes. These happen to be tomatoes that are what are called heritage or heirloom species. That simply means they've been around for a long time. They've been used in the past. These are what your grandmothers would use. And these are plants that actually, you can grow them in your own yard. They don't require a great deal of pesticides. They're not genetically modified, so you're actually bringing into your body some of the nutrient matter that has been used over eons because that's the way these plants evolve. But one a quick little tip I want to tell you about growing a tomato plant, because a lot of people come back to us and say, oh my gosh, it got eight foot high and it was beautiful with all sorts of green leaves, but no tomatoes. Quick little advice. See these little pieces down here? These parts right here, you don't want growing on your tomato plant, because you want your tomato, that one's got a dead leaf. These are called suckers. You look for these and you break them off. See that sucker starting right there? All that's going to do is take energy away from this plant, and we want the plant to produce a baby. The baby is actually the tomato. So you take your suckers away, the thing grows very, does a great job of growing, and then you end up with a strong plant with an abundance of tomatoes. Now when you're getting a tomato or by purchasing a plant, one of the things to watch for is they have a little sign saying it's a determinate or indeterminate. You usually find that on the tag itself. What determinate and indeterminate means, if it is indeterminate, then it's going to have tomatoes all season. If it's determinate, it's only in one time during the season. Most people for heirloom type tomatoes they do not want all of their tomatoes in a two week period. They prefer getting mid tomatoes throughout the growing season and that's why they look for indeterminate types of tomatoes.